What's up guys? We're here with another Chinese cultivation novel video. That's a that's a long sentence. This one probably is, even longer in Mandarin. That, that's <laughs> very true. So this one is kind of a rant uh, on my part, but it's in most simplest terms, you've read the title, but is when is the character too edgy or when is a story not interesting when a character does not care about anyone else besides himself? Mm. So um, I was reading, as always, I was reading a Chinese cultivation novel. The novel this one is called Reverend Insanity, and I probably got thirty mm, percent, which is like four hundred chapters. So I feel like I could review this uh, novel pretty well. Um, so this novel was about a guy who got reincarnated. You know, standard cultivation novel uh, plot, but he really doesn't care about anyone. Not his family. Not like there's no girl in the story. There's no like love interest. There's no f there's no like kids that he has. There's no one that he cares about besides himself. And the point of this video is like, when is a character not necessarily edgy, but when is the character like too much of a villain or just like it's the story is pointless in many ways. Um, so Josh in this video, obviously he yeah. hasn't read the novel. No. But I think first I of all- I can't talk shit about this book, but I can lean in on the, the, the question at hand. So I, I think w the purpose of, of this is to talk about like when an edgy character is cool and when an anti-hero is cool and when it goes too far. So probably the clearest version is Deadpool. He's an anti-hero, yeah. but he has motivations. He has something that he's fighting for. And there's times where, you know, he aligns himself with people that do have a cause or people that have certain things. I mean, if, if you're talking about just the movies, obviously that's a little different. But I think in the, you know, in the comics, it's a little bit like all over the place. But probably the best comparison, which we've actually got some hate for this series for him being too edgy. <laughs> but uh, Ari Ferretta, not the show. But the books kind of shows what an edgy the series is that's about. good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Josh, talk about the adaptation that's good. Yeah, talk about how his character is is well developed. Uh, yeah, I think they just do a really good job of you know walking a balanceful act throughout the story because yeah, there is. I think what adds to you know him not being too edgy is that yes, he does not care for you know just about himself for you know the beginning part of the like the first book but i think it's really because like you get to see him get to that point so it's like a despair travel so and even at the end of the day like he still has something he, he has two things he cares about at the end of the day he, ha he cares about you know like getting home which i guess you know that's not enough but i think the main part is that he does care with somebody outside of himself and that is you so you know <clears throat> having those connections is i think necessary because in some instances where you tell a story that is a villain, you know, those are interesting to an extent, but they don't really, they can get old quickly is basically what I'm about to say. Um, but for like anti-heroes, you know, you have to have either something that they go back and forth on being, you know, going in with the good, mixed with the bad, or you have to have somebody that is fighting for a cause or fighting for something that they believe is right, you know, even if it's not right by most people's standards. And, you know, I think that's kind of when it gets a little too edgy, maybe, is when, you know, they're going like full dark, you know, full Sith Lord, <laughs> in a sense. Like, for instance, uh, uh, since I just brought it up, like the Kylo Ren thing, like the latest Star Wars, that's like one I think you could say takes it a little bit too far because he's really just bad for the sake of being bad. You know, there's really no justification for it. Like in Ari Ferretta, I think there's a bit of a justification just because you do see this, the, the spare factor. So you can kind of understand where he's coming from. So I guess that is maybe the biggest thing if you're wanting to tell a villain story is just how, you know, how you see their point of view, right? Because like for somebody like in the latest like Joker movie, like he's a straight up villain. But like the way they do it in the movie is very graceful in building that like, yes, he is like kind of unhinged and like <clears throat> the way he decides to fix those problems is not the way to go about it. <clears throat> but, you know, seeing the downtrodden thing, seeing just like how that's really his only option is, you know, I think something that gives that avenue merit. You know, or at least justifying it in a sense that like, you know, you find it interesting or that, you know, it's not too much of a bad thing, you know? Yeah, and I feel like 
cultivation novels in general, um, you know, I can list a, a, a ton of them, whether I'm not even going to list them out, but because there's, <laughs> there's too many. Yeah, but, you know, there are... You don't remember the name. Yeah, honestly. Forget them. There, there, there are anti-heroes who, you know, they, they killed nine generations of their family because, like, one guy betrayed them. And I've always yeah. struggled a little bit with that, but that's probably, like, cultural as well as, like, just the genre in general. But, like, with Reverend Insanity... They killed my dad. <laughs> they did kill many, <laughs> many dads. But in Reverend Insanity, it's kind of different um, because... The characters, like, the only motivation of the character is, character is eternal life, which is, like, that's cool, I guess, if you want to be a motivation. But, like, him being so bad and not caring about any individual person in the story, it kind of uh, relegates these persons. Because, like, I feel like in traditional Chinese cultivation novels and novels in general, so you have, you know, you have heroines, you have people that, you know, possibly could be allies, you have people who are villains, and, you know, they may turn to be allies. But in this novel, it feels like, Oh, they're allies temporarily, but at the end of the day, he still wants to kill everyone. So it's like, kind of like a Game of Thrones where it's like, I'll help you to further my own game, but once that's over with, I'm definitely coming for your head. Pepper. Yeah, but like even in Game of Thrones, like there's an, there's people with multiple objectives, um, you know, but like in this one... Right, it's, it's really, just not because they're evil, it's because they're trying to fulfill their goal. Yeah, this one is just like Eternal Life, which is very, an ar not necessarily an arbitrary objective, but it's something that's like kind of ethereal and kind of hard to quantify. Mm -hmm. Like, so... That kind of that kind of caused me to stop reading the novel. Um, now let me ask you: Is it like in the four hundred pages you read? Is four hundred chapters? Four hundred chapters. Well, isn't a chapter kind of like a page? Yeah, 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 yeah a thousand know, pages. It's probably yeah. Not going to get into specifics, but like in the in the story that you read, is it like he started out like once he figured out he's a more he's like all right, this is my view of it, or is it just like it's been like a. a 4,000 years, and now this is, like, his opinion. Yeah, so this book's kind of different because uh, this is his second reincarnation. So he gets transported into another world, lives for 500 years, then dies and gets reincarnated to back, like, the first part when he was reincarnated in the world. So, like, mm. when he gets reincarnated, he's, like, 14 now. And he lived 500 years and then dies, but he's, like, a special thing that reincarnates him back to him when he was 14 again. If that makes sense, it's kind of complicated, but so are these novels in general. <laughs> uh, but, like, um, so that kind of situation has some problems. And there's some problems with, like, the book in general. Like, his uh, superpowers, he can, like, kind of go into the past, like, in inter intermittent terms. But, like, the book changes so that now he's a zombie, so he can't go in the back into the past for, for reasons in general. Mm. So I think there are some there are some structural problems with the book. But at the end of the day, the ultimate problem is, like, why should I care about this character if he's just pursuing internal life and, like, killing people? You know, if someone wants to be a villain, if they're trying to accomplish something and they have the people they care about, I feel like that's a lot more interesting than someone that's just like, ah, I want eternal life and I'll just betray everyone. And maybe it yeah. works. It works in a short story, but when I'm spending, like, 100 or 200 hours reading and it's really – he only cares about himself, like, what's the point? And not to say it isn't, like, a good story or it's, like, you know, not well executed in the sense that it's, like, you know, action-packed and, like, has some really cool, like, setup for, like, how he takes out people. Because, I mean, I haven't read it, obviously, so I can't say either or. But, like, yeah, if there's – I'm somebody that, you know, if I see, like, a villain story, whether it's, like, in a movie or, like, in a show and stuff, like, I would be full out to, like, try it or, like, give it a watch because it's a really fascinating perspective to see through. But at the same time, if it's done too much or if it's, you know, like, it drags on too long or it's just, you know, nothing, it's, like, that's the sole purpose of it. I would, yeah, I would say it's a bad thing. It's just, like, shouldn't be done. It definitely is too edgy in a sense. Because, like, uh, for instance, uh, there's another show that I'm watching right now that's uh, just released on Netflix, Altered Carbon. Great show. Hope I can talk about it later on the channel. Um, but I, I'm watching the second season because it just came out. And that guy is, like, a perfect example of not really being a likable dude, but... I, again, it brings another element to it that makes him and like his journey like a cool thing to watch and also kind of like, you know, in the sense that like it's tragic so you can kind of like, you know, understand his grief or his, uh, or his you know, motivation coming from that. Uh, and that's that, you know, he's been like a soldier for like, 
I think it's like close to like 300 years. And then he was like on ice for like, I think another 200 years. And then, you know, he comes out and he's trying to find like the person that he loves after he figures out that they're still alive, you know, after he lost everything. But in that span, he's like a total dick to everybody. And he basically says up yours uh, or just kills them straight up. But having that other element, you know, balance says that out. I guess, you know, it really comes down to preference because, you know, some people like a very shallow plot or like a very, you know, simple idea and they're just on it for the ride. They don't really want to think too much of it. It sounds like a series kind of like that. Those are probably like the most people that like find that edgy. I feel like if, if like Ari Fred, if like to go back, I don't want to spend too much on like one of these just in case you're <laughs> not interested in it. But like, I feel like if Ari Fred, like if Hajime had never found you or like he just decided to leave her there, I don't think the series would have been that interesting if he was just like, all right, I'm out of the labyrinth. I'm going to go to the next one. You know, I'm if I see now. anybody, yeah, I'm going to kill him. You know, like don't get me wrong, like for like maybe two or three books, that would be cool. But after that point, I would start not caring. And because I don't think if you make somebody completely not likable, really, the only thing you're going to like is maybe if they're like funny or like, you know, in a certain sense or, you know, I don't know. Because, like, there's plenty, like, for instance, like, uh, villains that you'll hate. Like, you'll absolutely despise their guts because, like, they kill, like, characters you love or, like, this, that, and the third. But, like, you know, you can, acknowledge, like, sit back and acknowledge, like, you know, that was a dang good villain. But as a center stage role, not really. Nah, you know, it doesn't work. I feel like I'm getting a little off topic of the, of the question at hand, of, like, for the video. But, I mean, it really is just kind of like a simple algorithm of... Like, you know, is a villain really capable of holding something like a story that is, you know, more than like a couple hours time, more than like five, ten hours time, you know, of like digesting a story, whether it be in like movies, TV or books? I don't think so. Yeah, it really depends on their motivation. And like I said, in this particular novel, the motivation is, I mean, it's fine to have someone's motivation be eternal life. And I'm, I'm sure I've read a book that has that. But if that's the only motivation he doesn't care about anyone, I think it gets tiresome at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And like Josh was saying, um, you know, villains, villains are necessarily made to make, are not necessarily made to be main characters. And I think you have to make an effort to change that if you're going to make them to be main characters, whether it be as an anti-hero or, you know, just a straight villain, you yeah. know, whether it be, you know, whatever content. Now, I will say there is a few instances where I've seen <clears throat> how people design a villain and I'm like, you know what, this might work if you saw, like, them as, like, the protagonist or, you know, at least them as the center stage. And, but it's really like very rare stuff or like stuff that I don't really, you'd have to have like a really good direction for uh, like a story to go with it. But uh, like one that pops into my mind is like, you know, like I've seen like serial, uh, serial killers and like some stories where it's more of a compulsion. They don't necessarily enjoy it, but they're just drived. It's almost like a, a natural instinct or craving for them to do. That is in one area where I feel like if the guy's like constantly trying to stop himself, even though he enjoys it, you know, so like in a sense he is a villain, but you know, he's, his heart's not necessarily in it. That can be an interesting one. Um, another one that pops to mind is somebody that has like multiple personalities, like, cause technically they're, they're bad, but they're also not bad you know, because there's two people technically in the same body. So that like, you know, those two instances, I think it's like, if it has like an oversaturation of like, you know, I don't care about anybody or, you know, I'm just gonna be bad because I wanna be bad. Like if that's only part of it, then yeah, it works. Even if it's the same character, you know? Yeah, and, you know, um, I don't want to rag on anyone who really likes this series. I just think that it's something I want to talk about when edgy, when being edgy is too edgy. I don't know what we'll talk about this or when a villain doesn't work as a main character. I feel like when it becomes too edgy is just when you're only focused as, like, them is the only thing they care about. Yeah, and I, 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 I totally agree with that, but... Like I was saying, I think it's all about... Mo when it comes to a villain, it's all about their motivation, how you can relate to that. 
in in some way, even if it's you know five percent, I can relate to that or understand what he's where at least where he you know started and where he is now. Mm-hmm. And this book really didn't relate to that. Um, this book, it seemed like he was just evil for being evil because it was more convenient for him. And like I again, his motivation wasn't inspiring in re- in regards to like him not caring about anyone. Mm-hmm. So I don't know Th- that I think Reverend and Sandy. I mean, you can check it out if you would like to. It is something super edgy. So if you're like you know 14 and you're super edgy right now, you may really <laughs> like it. But um, it is something that I feel that it was a variation on the Chinese cultivation novel that I didn't necessarily like as much, and I feel that it got tiresome, especially in the later volumes where. Um, why would I be invested in this character if this, all his motivation is living, a, you know, having eternal life, and he really doesn't care about the world, the people, or, or anyone else besides himself? Yeah, because when you only have like one dimension like that, it's really hard to uh, center a story around somebody like that. I will ask though: is it is it just like the uh, the interactions, or is it? A culmination of everything there. Um, yeah, in some ways it is. It is in the interactions because, like, oh, this is a new character. That's so exciting. Oh, wait, he's just like a villain because he's, you know, the main character c- could kill him at any time. So who cares about this character? So I feel like that's a part of it. And then there's other parts of it, but I think the main part is like, oh, this is a new character. I'm excited to see how he how it relates to the main character. And in this series, it's like, well. It actually doesn't matter because he's a villain. He could kill this person at any time anyway because he doesn't care about anyone else. So it becomes kind of monotonous. I feel like the – you know – okay. So for instance, I feel like one instance where this might work (laughs) is if it was like a one-punch scenario, but it's a villain. Where he just sees like upcoming heroes and he's just like, yeah. Him it's out. over. Yeah, yeah, it, it can work. But then it leads to like him finding somebody that's like can actually take him down. Yeah, you know? it works in short form, and I think like some of those stories can really work if it's short. But over like 10, 20, 30, 50 yeah, hours, yeah. It repetition because really it gets boring. It's the same thing over and over again. It's like when you have a throwaway villain and his motivations like, well, I want to take down society because society has wronged me. You know, it's like okay, all right. <laughs> you know, we don't want to see this for fifty, a hundred hours. Yeah. But yeah, I don't want to make this video too long, but that was just kind of one of our one of my rants specifically that I think it's something that could better the community. And if you're looking for a book, a Chinese uh, novel to read, don't read this one. Read something else. Unless you're super edgy, then do whatever you want. Look at our other cultivation <laughs> exactly <laughs> videos. We're not cultivation chat room because that one's not very good. Ooh, but anyway, uh, shots thrown. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll have more Chinese videos out. I actually have another rant and another uh, specific videos that I'm I'm reading. So check those out, and if you're excited, the content is the Chinese cultivation novels are free, so you can read them whenever you want. Any other suggestions that we get, people so, like free. That's true. That's true. We do like free here. All right. So thank you, addicts, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Later.